Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Kim. I haven't made a video in a little while here. I've had some family visiting, but they've all gone back home, so I um, wanted to do a video. So today I'm going to be talking about my food delivery vehicle that I use for DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. An old car versus a new car, the things I took for granted. Just kind of want to share that experience with you. So, before I forget, please don't, um, please subscribe. I appreciate that. And if you find this interesting, um, I'd also appreciate a thumbs up. That'd be fantastic. This will not be a long video, but hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I'm lucky that I have two cars. Back when I started DoorDash, um, December 2020, God, it's been almost a year. Crazy. Anyways, I used my personal vehicle to deliver. Okay, this is great. I did this out of order. Let's just show them all. Okay. Um, my new car was only a few months old and really not an ideal door hat, DoorDash vehicle. But it was the only car I had, so whatever. I just decided to do it. I was At that point, I wasn't even sure how long I would do DoorDash. I didn't know how lucrative it would be, if I would even enjoy it. And once the holidays were over, I kind of thought it would just kind of fall apart. And, you know, who knows, whatever. So, in January, um, I realized that I really enjoyed it and I wanted to continue doing it. Uh, we bought an older Volvo. Got a great deal. Um, and I would use that for DoorDash. And later for Grubhub and Uber Eats, which um, I added shortly after. <clears throat> it was a, It's a 2007 Volvo. And it was, like I said, a great deal, inexpensive. At, we felt like it was a great solution. The car was not perfect, but it did have low miles. It was comfortable, easy to drive, good on gas, etc. cetera. Uh, we couldn't tell that it had any major mechanical issues. It seemed fine. It drove great. So the only thing that was wrong with it was the AC didn't work. Um, but I thought maybe at some point we'd fix it or, you know, a few months down the line when I decided to stop doing DoorDash or whatever, we would sell it. That was our thought process at the beginning. So, I used the Volvo f solid from January, February, March, April. Did great. Um, made a lot of money using that car. No issues whatsoever. I think in April is when it started having problems. Um, it needed a fuel sensor, you know, so we had to find a mechanic that would fix it. It was at that time that I realized that most mechanics in this area will not fix Volvos. I guess they're a different beast. So um, I did find a Volvo specialist who said he could put it in the fuel sensor, so he did that. Um, we had it serviced at that time. And then we put a new set of tires on. Car was perfect at that point, as far as I could tell, except for the AC. And we were hoping for a, you know, long time of trouble-free driving after, you know, doing that service and replacing the fuel sensor. Blah, 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 right? So, oh my God, I did this again. So basically, two weeks later, the car started having some electrical issues. And I started coming up with all these errors on the dash. It was driving rough, basically was saying that it had a voltage issue. So we took it back to the same Volvo specialist, and he said that electrical problems were a can of worms and basically didn't want to tackle the issue. He didn't feel like it was anything he did, and we didn't think it was either. We felt like this was a different problem, but, um, so yeah, that kind of sucked. So called a bunch of other places and just was getting run around. Nobody wants to work on Volvos. And especially not Volvos with electrical problems. So the car just sat at our house. And I used my other car, a newer car, to deliver. And the car sat and sat and sat. So months of delivering with the new car. So April, May, June, July. I can't remember when it actually died, to be honest. It was either in April or May. So you figure... May, June, July, August, part of September, I've been delivering using my new car. 
it's much more fun to drive than the Volvo. And of course has all the bells and whistles and the Volvo really had none. So I'm not really complaining, but I was putting so many miles on the car and I was worried about the mileage. So then I was really limiting myself to just really super short deliveries because I don't want to put a bunch of miles on my car. So that was kind of hindering the offers that I could accept. I don't really want to go far anyways, but it was always in the back of my mind that I was putting so many miles on this car. And I didn't want to continue doing that. So, long story short, we decided to fix the Volvo. So after calling so many places, nobody would fix it. My husband decided to fix it himself. He was a mechanic in his past life. <laughs> not his past life, but before his current career, um, and figured that the easiest and most likely solution would be to replace the alternator. Since it was having charging issues, that just seems like a good idea. We tested the battery, the battery seemed good, so alternator was the next um, thing to try. So we pulled the old one out, we drove to the parts store, bought a replacement, I think it was $219, something like that. Uh, it was rough work, it was hard. Um, the Volvo, I don't think it's super easy to work on, but he did get the new one in, put everything back together, and then it was time to see if it worked. So, yes, yay, turned it on. Everything sounded good. Um, he put the meter on there, and the battery was charging properly. You know, we really could have done this months ago, but I didn't really want him to have to do it, but I am sure glad that he did. So I wish we would have done it sooner, but you know what is what it is. At least now it is fixed. So today I decided to drive it. I had an 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. delivery shift. I actually worked until 2.30, so it was a three and a half hours on in the Volvo. Um, how'd it go? Let me tell you. Okay, so the car did great. No issues at all with the Volvo. No air lights. No charging issues. It drove great. I went about 70 miles. I purposely chose some longer deliveries to give the car a workout. I wanted to see how it would do. It did not disappoint. You know, when we first bought the Volvo, it was winter time and it didn't break down until spring. So I never really drove it during hot weather. So the whole AC thing didn't bug me much, but today it did. I was really hot today. So I realized there were some things I took for granted in the new car that I wish I had in the Volvo. It was a little eye-opening um, today as I was kind of complaining to my husband about driving the Volvo today and how hot it was in there and some things that I missed. Um, I thought this would be a good uh, video subject. So anyways, the biggest thing I missed today was air conditioning. It was not even that hot today, probably only 85, but I was so hot in the car. I had to drive with all the windows down, you know, with the sun beating in on you. And it, it was just a nice, hot, sunny day. So even as I'm out waiting in the restaurants and stuff, you know, you're waiting outside for the food, you're sitting in the sun. Then you get in the car, you're sitting in the sun. And yeah, it was hot. So I drank a bunch of water, but I was pretty miserable, to be honest. It was hot. Um, backup camera. Backup camera is another very important thing that I wish I had in the Volvo. Um, backing out of parking lots, parking in random areas near people's homes, etc. You know, it's nice to be able to look in the backup camera and see if there's a child that's behind you that ran behind you, or there's a person walking, you know, a dog, etc. I really missed having a backup camera today. Uh, Bluetooth is another thing that I really missed. I do have a USB Bluetooth adapter thing that plays through an FM radio station. You know, I have this so I can answer my phone, but it really doesn't work very well. Um, it doesn't connect all the time, and you know, it's just kind of staticky, and I had to drive with all the windows down, so it was really hard to talk on the phone. It's also really hard to, um, when you use the Bluetooth adapter thing, on my phone, um, if I'm like playing music from the phone, like Spotify or whatever, I don't get the notifications from the apps that there's an offer, so I have to keep looking at my phone. And also, um, 
I do use the Bluetooth for the directions and the navigation, which is nice, and that works fine. But um, it's just not as nice as having built-in Bluetooth. And I miss the Apple CarPlay and the map display. Like I said, I get the audio instructions from the phone, but um, there's no display, so I can't see the car, the navigation. And I hate to keep looking at the phone, and like sometimes the map lady, you know, she doesn't tell you until the last minute you're going to be turning. I like to be able to look at the map so I kind of know where I'm going. So I missed that. You know, and the keyless entry, which I never really thought too much about, but today it was kind of a pain to keep reaching in my pocket and unlocking the door. You know, the new car, as you approach the vehicle, it unlocks for you, so you can just open the door and put the food in. But with your hands full, you know, trying to unlock with the key, pull the key out of your pocket, you know, without dropping the food, etc., it was kind of annoying. So anyways, yeah, those are the main things that I really took for granted in the new car that I really missed today now that I was back in the Volvo. You know, I hate to sound so spoiled and I hate to complain because I really am very blessed. But, um, you know, I know many people don't have all the mad modern gadgets in the cars and they do just fine. But I really wish the Volvo had a few more safety features you know I, I think the backup camera and the AC would be fantastic actually I want all those things but that I listed you know the previous screen but anyways it is what it is I will say it is a great car for food delivery I don't have to worry about dings because it already has some I don't have to worry about mileage it's already old if it smells like food it's not a huge deal if I spill something Yes, I'll be upset, but not as upset as if it was spilled in my new car. Um, you know, maybe we can sell it and I can find something a little more updated. Who knows? Or I might just keep driving it. I haven't decided. My new car will be my daily driver when I go to work and other places, but I'll use the Volvo for the food delivery until we decide what we're going to do. Anyways, can you relate? Do you deliver in a nice car? Or do you have a good car and then a separate car that's your delivery vehicle? What sort of car do you use to deliver? Do you have a little, um, I know a lot of people use like Priuses and little Toyotas and stuff because, you know, the mileage is good. That's another thing that would be awesome. Um, does it have all the bells and whistles? You know, comment below. Let me know. What kind of car do you have? Do you have multiple cars? Do you, um, I don't know, use a scooter? I saw a guy today on an electric bike. He had a DoorDash bag on the back of his bike. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Be fun. Anyways, so that's all I had to say today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that uh, you're all healthy, happy, making lots of money. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'd appreciate it. I'll see you next time.